prayer. Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to be in your house tonight, Lord. Thank you for this church, and thank you for the people that are here, Lord. I just pray that everything that's said and done tonight would honor and glorify you, Lord. Give us wisdom, Lord, and please just fill us with your Holy Spirit. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. At this time, um, Some of you might be wondering why I'm here, uh, all the way from Phoenix, Arizona, but I'm just uh, here as a friend to help out. And I'm going to be uh, preaching, God willing, on Sunday morning as well. But um, Pastor Romero has an announcement to make, and then uh, we'll talk further. I'm just going to read this. I just want to let you guys know that I'm stepping down as the pastor of Steadfast Baptist Church. I haven't been ruling my house well. I've been a terrible husband and father. I'm the one at fault in this situation. My wife and my kids, they're not to blame. I love Steadfast Baptist Church. I love my family. This is the best decision is for, our, for my family and this church to make. We plan on staying here as members of, our, of this church. I'm very sorry for the hurt this may cause people, the discouragement. I'm so sorry. I, I love you guys. I wish I wouldn't have let it get to this point. I love, thank you, Pastor Anderson, for coming to help us, help my family, and help my wife and I. And uh, I love you guys. All right, so like I said, I'm here to help. And um, I'm, I'm here to preach and to, to fill the pulpit, but obviously a new pastor is needed, and um, it's, that's very important that uh, since Pastor Romero is stepping down, that someone else step in to take care of that. He is disqualified from being a pastor, um, and so we need someone else to be the pastor going forward. And, um, you know, first of all, I just... I wrote down my cell phone. I'm going to be here for the next several days, and I want to be available to help people. So I wrote down my phone number right here. I'm just going to set this up here so that anybody can, you know, get my phone number and call me or text me, communicate with me with any concerns or issues, any questions that you have, or if you just, you know, want to talk, just want to fellowship, whatever, uh, just to, so that we can get through this, okay? Um also, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have lunch just right down the street over at this uh, Jengus Grill that's right down the street from here. I'll be there at lunchtime tomorrow. I'll be there for several hours. Brother Edelman's going to be there with me. If anybody wants to just come down and just talk, you, know, you got my number. I'm going to be around. I'm going to be here. And so I want to help in any way possible. Now, you know, it's, it's really important that this church continues to go forward and go on. Okay, because this is a great church. It's, there's a lot of great people here, and uh, we don't want this church to suffer or die. You know, we want the church to stay strong and keep moving forward. We want to see, you know, greater days ahead, souls saved. There's no reason in the world why the church can't continue to thrive going forward. Okay, and also, you know, Pastor Romero has stepped down. Let's not punish him for stepping down by badgering him or rubbing his nose in it or, you know, trying to bug his wife or him, trying to get details or something like that. Because, honestly, that's just not really going to help anything, you know, to know the details. I mean, he's admitted, hey, look, you know, I need to step down. So, you know, hopefully that's enough for you to just basically be glad. Because we want people to step down when they have a problem and not to just keep on going like everything's fine and just you know just up oh, just keep going that's not what we want you know we want people to do the right thing and so you know i just want to at this time answer any questions that people have as far as uh the way forward try to just kind of talk to you guys and we can just have a talk here and 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 i can kind of just let me just start out by telling you what i think the plan should be and then we can talk about that. And obviously, it's a lot maybe for you guys to process since you just heard about this. Obviously, you might want to sleep on things. And that's why I'm going to be here tomorrow and, and after that to talk to you. I'm going to be here Sunday morning and everything. But, you know, I think it's important that 
that you guys get a new passer in here right away. I think that's very important. Now, there are two things about that, is that whoever you guys get in here, number one, has to be qualified to pastor. Number two, you know, has to be willing to take on a, a church of this magnitude because this isn't like, this isn't like starting a church from scratch in your living room where you got 10 people coming. I mean, this is already a, a big operation here. Lots of people go to this church, big crowd on Sundays. And then you got the Florida church plant, the Oklahoma church plant. So it's got to be somebody who's qualified and it's got to be somebody who's willing to do it. Okay. Who wants to do it. And that, and that basically understands this church, believes like this church. Okay. Now we have a guy in mind that meets that criteria which i think is a big blessing that there's even somebody out there who's qualified and wants to do it and that person is jonathan shelley okay jonathan shelley started a church down in houston texas five months ago but he understands the the seriousness of the situation here that you have a you know a big thriving soul winning church and no pastor and he's willing to step up to the plate he's willing to move up here and take over this church and you know he can be ordained as pastor as soon as this sunday night and you know um i've talked to a few people already that, that think it's a great idea but um you know i'm 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 here to answer any questions or so does anybody have anything they want to say or any questions because we you know we don't we want to basically be transparent and open here and did you still have a question yeah, what, what if we don't want to let him stay Okay, duh. let me just repeat the question so everybody can hear it. What if we don't want to let him step down? We need him. He's our pastor. He is disqualified. Do you do you want do you want do you want someone to be a pastor who the Lord says is disqualified? You know, I mean that that would be my answer to that question. So it, it, it's if it's not something it's not something where it's like, eh, you know what I mean? It's it, it's just. It has to be this way. If it, if it didn't have to be this way, it, it wouldn't be this way. You know what I mean? So, but that's a that's a good question, though. Does anybody else have anything that they want to say? Anything? And I and and it's okay if you don't have anything to say because it's a lot to process. I understand. We can talk later as well. He's going to return. He's not going to be returning. So. Um, but he does, you know, we're hoping that he could stay here and, and be a member of the church. He wants to stay here and be a member of the church. He doesn't, you know, yeah, he wants to stay. So, yes. I, I don't recommend that. I don't think that's a good idea. Now, you know, he, he I'll just repeat the questions so everybody can hear it. He said, hey, can we vote on the next pastor? The, you know. <coughs> I can see having a vote if it were a situation where the church were kind of divided. Let's say the church are kind of divided and a bunch of people are kind of pushing for one thing and a bunch of people are pushing for something else and there's kind of like different sects in the church or different factions and these people over here are pre-trib and these people are post-trib. These people are kind of King James only and these people aren't or these people are for soul winning these people aren't for soul winning. I could see if, 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 if there was division and if there was... Uh, you know, factions in the church, or if maybe it was someone questionable that were being brought in, you know, and this guy's questionable, let's bring it to a vote. So if, if people are demanding a vote or something, then yeah, we could do that. I don't think that that's a good idea because this isn't, this isn't like a, this isn't like a, a presidential election where people are running for office and we're voting for this guy or that guy. I don't believe in that kind of leadership. I don't believe in democracy. I, you know, I believe that it's better if we can just kind of, you know, come to a decision here and and just uh, without having an actual vote. Now, if 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 it becomes necessary to have a vote, then yeah, you can vote on it. I don't think it's necessary. You know, it, it, but if I it, but if if people are coming to me saying, hey, we don't want Jonathan Shelley as our pastor, then I, you know, then it may come to that where we'll take it where we'll bring it to a vote. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to add or does that satisfy you? Okay. So if it, if it becomes necessary, we'll do a vote, but I'd, I'd, I'd prefer not to. I don't, think it's, I don't think it's helpful. You know, I think it's better if, uh, 
if if everybody believes that he, and like i said it's not like there are 10 people 10 qualified guys are just lined up for this job and it's like which one do we want you know what i mean and uh you know you got a guy that's and, and i i just want to say that i have total confidence in jonathan shelley you know i believe in him he was he was a great church member at faithful word i think he preaches great sermons i mean i i think that <coughs> And he's a Texas guy. He's from Texas, so I, I know that's important to you guys out here, you know. But um, I don't get it. But no, I'm just saying, you know, he is a Texan. He's from Fort Worth, in fact. He, I guess he, I believe he grew up part of the time in Fort Worth, part of the time in Amarillo. So, and if anybody has any questions about him, I can answer questions about him to the best of my ability. Um, you know, you can get in touch with him also. He's, you know, the soonest he can get here is Sunday night. So he's gonna, he's speaking to his church tonight and on Sunday morning, but he can drive out here and be here Sunday night. And what I would like to see happen, personally, just because I think it's so important to transition to the next pastor as soon as possible so that we're not just in limbo. You know, this church needs to stay independent and, and it needs leadership, okay? The longer you're in limbo, the more damage is gonna be done, I believe. I, I would like it if we could just kind of stop the bleeding. And I'm hoping that, that, that you guys don't lose any church members. I'm hoping that the whole church family can stay here, stay together. I mean, yeah, it's possible that some people get discouraged and fall out, especially if they're new believers or new or whatever. But it'd be great to see everybody stay, everybody join together. Because it's not like you came here just for one person. You know, you came here for Christ. You came here for the Lord. And you came here for each other, too. You know, it's a, it's a great church. It's a great group of people. So please don't lose faith in Steadfast Baptist Church. You know, um, I guess we're going to find out whether this is just a motto. You know what I mean? Or whether that's really who you are. Steadfast, okay? And, you know, the, the, the a verse that comes to my mind is, Be ye therefore, you know, steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So I don't want anybody to get discouraged and think, oh man, what a disaster. It's all, it's all been in vain or something. Look, no one can unsave the souls that have been saved. Amen. Every soul that was saved out soul winning, everything that Pastor Romero has accomplished, every good thing that's been done, it's still there. Those souls are still saved. Those people have still been ministered to or edified. That stuff all still exists, okay? So let's say you moved out. Hey, I moved all the way out here. You know, I moved my family out here. And then this. Well, here's the thing. Maybe God allowed you to move out here so that you could be here for such a time as this to help encourage the people around you, to strengthen the brethren, to be strong, to help make up a backbone of this church to get through this time, to get behind the next pastor and rally behind him. And, 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 and you can be greatly used of God during this difficult time. And so you're here for a reason. You know, I don't know if some people just recently started coming. Maybe you're brand new to the church. Maybe you just started coming. You're here for a reason. God brought you here for a reason. And so... Don't just say, oh, well, I'm out of here. You know, just hang hang with the team here and get involved. I mean, the whole point of church is not just to come and be entertained and listen, you know, sing some songs, listen to preaching. It's not just about what you can take out of church. It's about what you can put in. Okay, well, this is an opportunity for you to give back. You know, this is an opportunity for you to say, you know what? I'm going to be somebody that's going to help the people around me, encourage the people around me. I'm going to be extra faithful out soul winning. I'm going to be extra faithful to church. I'm going to step up my Bible reading, prayer, my walk with God, because, you know, I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit right now because, you know, I need to be a leader right now. I need to step in and, and, and stand in the gap right now. And so I, I think that that's where we're at. So your work is not in vain in the Lord. You know, whatever you've done in the past, that still stands. Now, here's the thing. We want to preserve this church, though, so that great works will continue in the future. And in order to preserve the church, okay, you know, we, we need a leader because this, this church is too big to be floating around 
leaderless. It's it's a it's a you know it's a it's a big. You say, well, it's not that big of a church. The average fundamental Baptist church in America runs seventy five. This church runs about one hundred and fifty on Sundays. So it's a it's a good sized church. It's a it, it's and you know obviously the devil would love to see this church just go away. But you know this needs to continue. Amen. You know the the souls aren't going anywhere. They need to be saved. So, all right. Who who has a question? Who has anything to say? Yes. I just wanted to go on the board that uh, as sad as Pastor Murrow stepping down is, as soon as you mentioned Pastor Shelley being able to step in, uh, I think that's a wonderful idea, and uh, I I would love for Pastor Shelley to be here in this church as soon as possible. Okay. So for those that couldn't hear him, he said, you know, he he's he's happy about Brother Shelley coming. He he loves the idea and he wants him here as soon as possible. Anybody else feel the same way? Yeah. 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 And 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 look, I, again, I'm just I'm trying to open the floor to just whoever, you know, I don't want to uh, I don't want to just get up here and just tell you, hey, this is how it is. Shut up and do it. You know, I you know I I want, want to get your thoughts on this. And so, you know, any of the men of the church have anything to say, you know, go ahead and, and let me know. Yes? I just want to know what was going to happen to Steadfast Jackson Hill and Steadfast. Okay, that's a great question. Thank you. He said, hey, what's going to happen with Steadfast Jacksonville? Here's the way I look at that, okay? A Adam Fannin is the deputy, right? And Brother Romero is the sheriff, okay? Well, what, what would happen if the sheriff got incapacitated or you know the sheriff uh, you know dies in the line of duty or whatever happens to the sheriff the deputy doesn't stop being the deputy right he doesn't just turn in his badge and say oh sheriff's gone i'm gonna you know he's gonna keep fighting crime he's gonna keep arresting the bad guys because he's still the deputy and he's gonna keep doing what he was doing last week this week until the new sheriff gets elected okay so that's kind of an illustration to help you understand de facto my understanding is that de facto Pastor uh, Romero hasn't really been doing a whole lot of hands-on with Steadfast Jacksonville these days because, you know, it's been around, that, that's that been going for a long time, and that Adam Fannin is doing 99% of, of that <coughs> ministry already. So basically, the, the, the way I see it is that whatever Adam Fannin was doing last week, he's going to continue doing next week, and, and as far as from a, from a practical standpoint, Nothing changes. He just keeps on doing what he's doing. Now, obviously, once the new pastor gets in, he's now he's going to answer to the new pastor. Okay. But as far as, I mean, I, I don't see why anything needs to change there for now. I mean, he just continues doing what he's doing. Does, does that answer your question or yeah. do you have Oklahoma anything else? City, same. same thing with Oklahoma City. I mean, Oklahoma City and, and Jacksonville, they're, they're, kind, they're pretty self-sufficient in that sense. And I, you know, I kind of have a little bit of experience with this because we have a satellite in LA, Faithful Word Baptist in Los Angeles. And, you know, when we first started that FWBC LA, I was really hands-on. I was down there. I was doing a lot of stuff. But, but these days, Bruce Mejia is doing 99%. I do almost nothing for that ministry. He's doing it. He just calls me and runs things by me. Hey, is, is this okay? Or what do I do in this situation? He calls me for advice and stuff. But I mean... The, as far as the day-to-day -day operations of that church, I have nothing to do with it. I mean, he and, and he's the plan is for him to be ordained this August, and that church is going to be cut loose and be independent. And so, you know, he's already, you know, uh, running it ninety-nine percent, and then and, and I and I, I Adam Fan is the same way. So, and Oklahoma similar to that. Is that is that anything else on that or? If you think of something later, let me know. I just want to. I just want to make sure everybody gets a chance to yeah, it's, uh, be satisfied. Everyone can hear. You know, I, I'll just say this, just for the uh, the sake, of, for maybe the sake of encouragement, for the sake of the church. I mean, a, 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 not that I'm stepping down is a huge change. Um, not that the pastor is a huge change, but like like you said, from a practical standpoint, nothing changes. Like we're all saved.
Charles is a friendly person. Charles is really friendly. You know, Pastor Ann is probably being good. Church is friendly. Church. I don't know. But, but you know, we, we consider ourselves a really friendly place and a really a tight knit group. And I guess now's the time to kind of prove it. Not just everyone else, but to ourselves. To God. You know, to ourselves before the Lord. Well, I amen everything he just said. I think that's a great comment. I, th- I think he's 100% right, you know. Um, not just Adam Fannin and OKC, but you know what? You guys, just just keep on trucking, right? I mean, keep on doing what you're doing. Yeah, this is, a, this is a, 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 not anything that is a good thing, but it is what it is, you know. Life, life throws these things at us, and what do we do? We keep going, you know. It, it's never going to be perfect. Life's never going to be perfect. You know, we, we plan our lives a certain way. We plan the future a certain way. It doesn't always turn out the way that we thought it was going to turn out. But you know what? God's still on his throne, you know, and, and God still loves us, and God still wants us to serve him, and God's not through with this church, you know? And, and, and I personally, you know, I don't think that this church is, is over or that, you know, or that the, the best days are behind you. I think the best days are ahead of you. That's right. And I don't believe that Jonathan Shelley is a downgrade in any way, shape, or form. Right. You know, I think that the, 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 the quality of preaching is going to be great with Brother Shelley. You know, you're going you're gonna to be edified. You're going to be fed. You're going to, you know, if, if you can stay through it and get through the valley here, if you can get through the night, the morning's coming, and you can thrive in this church. And this is still a great place to be. Yes. Well, the best thing you can do then is is keep the church going. Yes. I want to kind of piggyback on that, where obviously, you know, we love Pastor Romero and you know, his family, and obviously he's not on a job right now. Is there any way the church could maybe, you know, give him something like some type of a seventh or something just so he can get on a Well, listen, the, the, that's a good question. Here's what's going on with that, okay? He is, and he asked about, hey, Pastor Romero's out of a job. Is he okay financially? Okay. Here's the situation with that. He's going to stay on the payroll until the end of January because of the fact we want this to be a smooth transition. And so when the new guy comes in, okay, you know, hopefully Jonathan Shelley, you know, that's who I think it should be. But it, it, when, when Jonathan Shelley or whoever gets in here, you know, obviously he's not going to necessarily know the ropes of just the day-to-day and so, you know, he's going to need to get on the bank accounts and the paperwork and he's going to need the passwords and just kind of learn how this place operates. And I know there are other people that could help him with that. But also, you know, Pastor Romero is go- or no longer Pastor Romero, Brother Romero is going to be on hand during the whole month of January. He's going to be basically receiving pay just to be there to consult, like a consultant, just to basically help smooth the transition so that if the new guy needs a key to this door or needs this password or needs to understand this bookkeeping or understand this operation, he can basically get that information and get help from Pastor Romero. So so Brother Romero is going to assist the next guy with the transition throughout the month of January. And in return for that, he will remain on the payroll until the end of January. I mean, does that? And that'll give him a chance also to find a job and get started with that. Yes. Have that man into the ministry. We need to, you know, be behind that. 
And another thing I thought about was like the, you know, carnal churches are churches that kind of stick to one guy or another guy based off of yep. personality preferences. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. exactly. What he said, well, one say, if I am a Paul or I am a Paulist. Yeah. And we shouldn't be that way. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. This is what the Lord led us, you know, led us to do. That's, yeah, that's a great comment because this isn't a personality cult where it's about just that, our guy. And you know what? If it's just all about our guy and then our guy's gone and then, well, if he's gone, I'm gone. Well, you know what? That shows that you weren't following Christ then. You know? if, you're, if your faith is just shattered, like, that's it. I'm not even going to serve God anymore because I guess your faith is just wrapped up in a person. It's supposed to be in Christ. And you're exactly right. It doesn't matter who it is. If it's a spirit-filled man of God, that should be all that matters. Is he qualified? Does he love the Lord? Is he spirit-filled? Is he from Texas? That's all that should matter. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's all that should matter. So you're right. It, it shouldn't just be that it has to be one person if it's not that guy then i'm not going to be happy i mean you're right that's a carnal attitude the spiritual person is you know can can is has a broader they can follow peter and paul and apollos all you know and not just kind of only get behind one or the other so that's great great comments very good yes you and i talk we're going through a, a challenging time right now it's a transition transition, and Pastor Jimenez has said transition times are times when Satan will try and divide us. We have one of the tightest churches I've ever seen. I love you all. Okay, everybody loves everybody here. Let's not let things divide us. Let's be open. Pastor Anderson's here to listen. I'm here to listen. Other folks are here to listen. We're here to help and make this transition fastest as possible because that's going to be the best for everyone. Okay? Including Brother Romero. Amen. Amen. So, the more we can get behind everybody uh, and behind the decisions that, that have been made or we're trying to make because not everything's been made, you know, please just help us. I know you may not have everything right now, but as you come up with questions, you know, let us know. But be aware this is the time that the enemy is going to attack us. Things are going to happen. Tempers will flare. Issues will come through. You're going to feel all sorts of different things. Sadness to <coughs> anger. Your life is normal. Okay? We're going to go through the grieving process. Mm-hmm. We have to. And then we have to move on. Because, like we said, we're steadfast. And the mission still goes forward. Amen. Okay. We have a lot of people to reach. Amen. We can do that. Amen. And, um, you know, you might wake up tomorrow morning and just, oh, man, this is what I should have said. This is what I should have asked. You know what I mean? Because it's a lot to process. It's a lot to take in. That's why, you know, I'm I, my phone number's there. Brother Edelman, other leaders in the church that you can talk to, people that you can speak to. You can you can contact me, you can text me, you can call me, you can meet me face to face. I'm here in Fort Worth for the next several days. And you know, if you think of something totally different tomorrow, you have a different you feel differently about it tomorrow than you did today, you know, you can you the the lines of communication are open. Reach out to us. Okay. You know, it, it might be wise to give Brother Romero and especially his wife some space right now. Amen. You know, if, if they want to talk to you, they'll probably come, don't call them. They'll call you. Is that right? Yep. You know, I mean, <laughs> and if that's different, then we'll communicate that to you. But just, you know, get, I would say don't badger. Especially don't call them badgering them or, or whatever, you know. Yeah. Yeah, if you have questions on the transition, 
talk to him. If you have questions on church issues and getting into the church and stuff like that, call me. I have one yes. <clears throat> you guys need to remember that everybody has a personal responsibility. And the personal responsibility for themselves to continue to do what they need to do in their life. Don't let this discourage you from reading the Bible, from going soul winning, from your church attending. Everybody has a personal responsibility. As Jeremiah said, uh, he told the people when they came in through the gate, on the Sabbath, but he said, take heed to thyself. So take heed to yourself and maintain your responsibility as a Christian, because if not, then, then what do you live for? Right. Amen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's good. And you know what? I Listen, I've been through things like this in my life. I've grown up in church, and I've been through things like this multiple times. I've been in churches where the pastor stepped down or where there was a church split. I mean, I, I, I've been through things like this. And let me just tell you something. Life goes on. The work of the Lord goes on. It, nothing changes. You know, you, you, and, and I know when you're going through it, it seems like you're never going to get over this. It's never going to be the same. But life does go on, and time truly does heal all wounds. And I know this is going to impact some people harder than others. Some people are just going to be kind of like, okay, new pastor, let's do it, you know. But, you know, some people, this is going to be more emotional, a little more of a shock to the system. And, and that's okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with going through a little bit of a grieving process. But just, you know, keep doing what you're supposed to do. Keep serving God. Walk with God. And, and you know, it's, it would it, it, be like if, any, if anything negative ever happens – you know, let's say you have a child that dies or something, you know, or you have a loved one who dies, a friend dies or something. You're going to grieve. You're going to be sad. You're going to be upset. It's normal to go through a lot of emotions and everything like that. But just realize that you're not going to feel that way forever. You know, weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Okay, and so there are brighter days ahead. Just hang in there. Things are going to get better. Don't just... Uh, get down you know just 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 take it one day at a time just get through it keep coming back and and serve god and just take it one step at a time yes sunday night so he's he's gonna preach at his place on sunday morning and then he's gonna drive up here so i don't he's probably not gonna get here just till you know pretty much in time for the service or so i don't know exactly how far it is to houston but, you know, he's pretty much just going to come straight up here and get here in time to preach. And, you know, I'm, I would like to ordain him as the pastor of this church on Sunday night. Right. And then just he shows up on Monday morning ready to roll. And we, and we, get, and we make things happen. That's what I'm recommending. Okay. Now, another que I know this question hasn't been asked, but I'm just going to go ahead and throw it out there anyway in case it's on anyone's mind. What is my scriptural authority to do that? To ordain Pastor Jonathan Shelley as the pastor of this church. And the scriptural authority that I would point to is in Titus chapter 1. Paul told Titus, he said, For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. Okay. So Titus was left in Crete by the Apostle Paul, to ordain elders in every city. Why? Because something was lacking. He said to set in order the things that are wanting or lacking and to ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. Well, here's the thing. You guys are a church without a pastor right now. Something's wanting. Something's lacking. Something's missing. Something needs to be set in order. And so basically, I'm Titus and I'm here trying to set in order things that are wanting and ordain an elder to run this church that's what i'm here to do i'm here as a friend i'm here to help and that's my scripture authority to ordain yes Thank you. you're welcome <clears throat> yes i have a question um so people that are still like doing like the local uh stuff in the ministries like mm -hmm. uh, video clips or mm -hmm. Up so many times and stuff. Is that going to change? Or? 
No, I think that we should try to, he, he, just in case anybody didn't hear him, he said, hey, what about people that have jobs in the ministry right now? People are running their soul winning time or they're, they're running the Facebook page or the YouTube channel, or whatever, whatever they're doing. Um, just keep doing what you're doing. You know, uh, uh, unless the new pastor tells you, hey, we're going to update this or we're going to reorganize this, you know, until you, until you hear differently, I would say just keep doing what you're doing. You know, I don't think, I, I think that's the best way to, to just, you don't want everything to just come to a grinding halt and go back and reinvent the wheel and start from scratch on organizing this place. I mean, this place, there's already a machinery in place. I would say just keep on going with it. One comment I want to add. If you're doing something for the ministry, let me know so I can consolidate a list so when Pastor Shelley comes in, I can say, here's what everybody's doing. He's got one place. He knows what everybody's doing. We know who it's at. So we kind of consolidate. Kind of who to call if right. he has a question about X, Y, or Z. Exactly. Yeah. And and remember, he's going to have Pastor Romero assisting him <coughs> during January as a consultant, you know, to basically smooth that out. Yes? What's going to happen to his church if he were to come here? Well, that's a good question. The question was, what's going to happen to the church down in Houston? Well, here's the thing. <coughs> Pastor Shelley is prioritizing this church because of the fact that there's a major need here. There's a leadership void. It's a big church. There's a lot at stake. You guys need a strong leader right now. He's prioritizing that. But obviously, we want to keep the Houston church going. So the plan right now is that he's going to move, he's going to move their service down in Houston. The Wednesday night, he's going to move to Thursday night. Okay. And he's going to basically preach. He's going to fly down there or drive down there and preach every Thursday night for a while so that he's down there at least every week. But he's going to be here Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And in the long run, he's moving his family here. This is going to be his church. He's pastoring this church. But we want to keep the other church alive. So he's basically going to keep that other church going from here. And he's going to preach down there once a week on Thursday nights. And there's a local guy that there's a good chance that, that there's a local guy down there that's a good preacher, that's a good friend of ours, he's one of us, and um, that he'll step in and do Sundays, and he's a good preacher. So there, there should be a local guy that's ready to step in and do Sundays. I don't know if it's been confirmed or if he's agreed to do it, but you know we're hoping that he will step up to the plate. Let's say that that local guy falls through, okay, and, and he doesn't pan out. Then... You know, uh, Faithful Word and Verity Baptist Church have both said, hey, we'll help because we have a lot of preachers in our ministries and stuff. So we'll fly guys out there to preach on Sundays every single week to make sure that the pulpit's filled down there every single week. So we want to we're, we're committed to keeping that church alive and we want to find a pastor for that church as soon as possible. But that church is not going through what your church is going through. And that church is not as big of an operation as your church because it's a pretty new church. So it's easier to just kind of put that thing on autopilot down there and, and keep, it, keep it rolling, fill the pulpit, keep it cranking. And then eventually, yeah, they're going to need their own pastor down there. And that's going to be cut loose independent. But for now, Pastor Shelley's going to be doing both, as it were. But this is, this is his main thing. So it's not like he's moonlighting up here. He's going to be moonlighting down there. This is his main thing. This is where, and this is where he's, he's in it for the long run. You know, is to take this over. He's, he's in it. He's, he's going to commit to it and, and get it done. That's the plan. Great question. You're, you're, you guys are asking all the things that I thought to myself, I'm going to bring that up, and then I forgot to bring up. So it's good that you guys are asking because it's reminding me all the things I needed to say. Well, I mean, I can preach. It just I, here's the thing. I, I don't want to just get up here and just start preaching until everybody's satisfied. You know what I mean? So I, I feel like it's more important that we give everybody a chance to vo give their voice and that we get all the issues dealt with and everything like that. I think that's the most important thing right now. And if if we get through that, you know, I can preach to you guys a little bit. But um, and on Sunday morning. The plan is to have a normal service on Sunday morning. So on Sunday morning, we're just going to sing hymns, and I'm going to get up and preach a normal sermon this Sunday morning. 
and we're just going to have business as usual Sunday morning church. And then the plan on Sunday night is to, um, you know, have Pastor Shelley come in and, and he's going to preach a sermon. Have a, Again, normal church service. He preaches a sermon. And God willing, what I believe should happen is that he should be ordained as pastor this Sunday night so that we can just move forward, turn the page, put it behind us, and, and marching on. So I, ju I just don't want, I, I just didn't want to come in here, drop a bomb on you, and then, all right, let's turn our Bibles. And just, <laughs> I feel like what we're doing right now is pretty important. So, it, you know, if, if we get done and there's time, I'll do some preaching, but uh, I'm just trying to make sure that we, that we address all the issues. I think it's really important right now that we communicate. If you got something that's burning inside of you, you know, I don't want it to. You just have a bad attitude or something because you're afraid to say something. And look, if you're if, if if you're shy about saying something publicly, I totally understand. That's what the phone number is for. Because you know, some people are comfortable piping up in a public forum like this. Other people might have real concerns, questions, but they're just not comfortable piping up in the congregation. You know, or or maybe ladies, you know, and and you don't want to speak out in the church. But you know. That's why I'm going to be at the restaurant tomorrow. That's why I'm going to be around town. That's why my phone number's here so that I'm, you know, so we can, we, we just want to make sure that everybody gets addressed. And, uh, you know, you can't always please all the people all the time, obviously, but we want to try to satisfy people and not just, you know, that you feel like, I didn't, you know, I never got to say, or I never got to ask, or we, we were left in the dark, or, you know what I mean? So I just want to make sure that everybody's satisfied and that we talk this out. Anything else? Does anybody have anything else to say? Yes, sir. That's a good question. I'm glad, and you know, I'm glad you asked because you know I want people to ask what's on their mind. Okay, so that's a good question that might be on other people's mind. His question is, you know, is there a guy at Steadfast that's qualified? You know, that that that, that it could be instead of bringing in an outsider, that it could be someone that's here. Let me give you my thoughts on that. Okay, my first thought is that that given the situation. I actually think that it's better if an outsider comes in, and here's why I think that, okay? Because it's, 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 it's very hard to reverse the dynamic. When, you know, when, when somebody's been your pastor, and now all of a sudden you're his pastor. You know, it reminds me of back, back when I was in uh, Indiana, I had a guy that was my ministry leader. So I was used to being like really respectful to this guy, and he's telling me what to do, and I'm saying, yes, sir. And I was, like, very respectful to this guy as my ministry leader. Well, then, you know, we ended up not being in the ministry together anymore. And then, actually, he got hired at the company that I worked at, and I was his boss. And that was hard. That was weird. Because it went from me being, like, really respectful to this guy as my mentor to all of a sudden now this guy is my employee. And it, it, and it created problems. And there were some problems, there were issues, and the work relationship didn't work out because of that kind of like, it was just kind of weird that way, okay? I'm not saying that it couldn't work. There are examples where it has worked. Grace and Fritz are a great example of it, of it working. But I personally think that it's better when an outsider comes in. Now, you know, the church that I came out of, Regency Baptist Church, was... Um, they had something similar happen where, you know, and I don't even, actually, I don't even know the details of the situation because I came after it was all over. I showed up, you know, in the days of the second pastor. But there was a situation where the guy started the church and then he ended up stepping down and the church had some problems and things. And basically, Pastor Nichols, what, he actually came in as an outsider and kind of, he ended up stepping in, taking over the church 
and and leading the church on to do great things for God. And 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 you know, I showed up I think a year after Pastor Nichols had started. And he was an outsider that came in and I, and I think it's just good to bring in an outsider just to have a fresh perspective and um you know, and then there's no issues of where he feels like he has to obey Pastor Romero or something. You know what I mean? He can kind of just come in because look, friends, he needs to be the leader. Okay, we we don't believe in a milk toast leader. We don't believe in uh, a, a, a church that's led by the congregation or a church that's led by deacons or a church that we believe in a pastor led <laughs> church. Yeah. You got to have leadership. Everything rises and falls on leadership. The whole Bible, Moses, Joshua, the judges, David, Solomon. I mean, you always, when things are going good for God's people, there's a strong leader at the helm. Yeah, right. You know, and so you, you got to have a leader. You don't want a guy who's like a lame duck leader where he feels like, you know, everybody looks at him as just one of the guys. Now, look, and again, I don't want you to misunderstand me. I'm not saying that it can't work. It, yeah, a guy can come from within. And yeah, he can take the reins and become the pastor. And I don't, I don't think it's a bad thing. I'm just saying I think it's better if an outsider comes in. That's my opinion, okay? And then the, the other thing I want to say is that the, 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 only, the person that I've heard put forth as the guy that could possibly be that guy from within is Brother Philip Milstead, is the, the person that was put forth to me with that. And I asked a few people what they thought about that. And I asked Adam Fannin. I asked a couple of other people. And, you know, basically everyone that I, I only asked a couple people though, okay. And from the three people that I talked to, they all told me the exact same thing. They said that Philip Milstead is a great guy He's pastor material. He's going to pastor someday probably, but they didn't feel that he was ready at this time. And this is a this is kind of a difficult situation. So, you know, we need somebody to come in and and, and look, I'm not a, I'm not against Brother Philip Mills said I like him. I I I know him a little bit and I I haven't heard anything negative about him in my life. I like him. He's a great guy. But what I'm hearing, and you guys know him better than I do, what I'm hearing is that he's a great guy. He'll probably be a pastor someday, but the, the timing is off for him. That's what I'm hearing. So, does that do? You, do anything else to add, or any other question before I move on to someone else? First time I ever met Jonathan Shelley was at a, a soul winning marathon 
for the anniversary. I think maybe it was the one year. What what was that? The it was the one year anniversary. The one year anniversary. That's where I met Jonathan Shelley. Was here, and and he came to that. So he's definitely you know he knows the church a little bit. He's been here. I know a lot of you. who who knows him personally. Meaning like you've met him, you've talked to him, several people. Yeah, he's been here, and um, I'm I'm just really thankful that he's stepping up to the plate because you know. I think it's a blessing because you know if, if if we just if, if, if I've seen churches go without a pastor for like a year, a year with no pastor, eighteen months with no pastor, and the church just goes like this. You know, even if the pulpit's being filled, even if people are preaching and they're cycling guys through, I'm telling you, it just it tanks. And then when the new and then when a new pastor gets in, then it's like, you know, you just you got to have that that leadership. It's just, it's just really important. It's critical. Yeah, these are this is all good good questions, good comments. Anything else? Just want to make sure everybody's satisfied. Yes. Are we keeping the name? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I think I think that I think that the name. It should definitely stay. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's the name. It's the name. You know, I mean, it's just. It'd be like, it'd almost be like asking me to change my name. So, it, 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 I mean, it's still steadfast. Still, it's the same people that it was last week. You know? Right? Right? Amen. Yeah, great comment. I mean, if, if if we were the old IFB, it would just be like we wouldn't. We would just be like business as usual. Just sweep things under the rug. Nobody would ever step down for any reason. If we were if we were the old IFB, then you know. There are old IFB church. The pastor's on his third wife, and he just keeps on trucking. Doesn't even matter, you know. The, he can self-destruct his family and self-destruct everything, and it's just like keep on going. You know, this isn't Greg Locke. You know what I mean? Where you 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 know you run off with the secretary, you're still the pastor. Third wife, still the pastor. You know, you're right. This church has integrity. Our movement has integrity, and so if there's a problem. We need to deal with it. And like I said, if there's any issue, if there's a problem, if people have any kind of issues where they, they can't pastor anymore, they need to just step down. You know, and, and I've said it many times. Hey, if I end up having a problem, I'll step down. You know, if my family falls apart, I'm going to step down or whatever. You know, I've said that many times because of the fact that we can't just can't just ignore it and keep going. And that's what a lot of churches do. You know, but we, and also, I remember I've been in church my whole life, and like I said, I've been in churches where things went bad. I, I've been in some churches where somebody just disappears, and you're like, Where'd they go? and no one will tell you. <laughs> you know what I mean? I remember, I, I mean, I was a teenager, I was in a Baptist church as a teenager. The youth leader just wasn't there one day. I just, I walk into Sunday school on Sunday morning, and the youth leader's just gone. And it's just like, where is he? Now I gotta tell you. <laughs> and it was just kind, of, you know what I mean? Like it was, it was kind of frustrating because you're like, whoa, man, you know, this guy just disappeared. He, we didn't get to say goodbye. We don't even know what's going on. We don't even, we don't have a clue. And he was just gone. I, I, to this day, I have no clue what happened. And I didn't like the new youth leader very much. It was just kind of like, man, what's the deal? So you know, we're trying to, you know. W- I'm trying to let you know what's going on now now are we going into detail you know that's not going to help anything just to just to 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 basically you know rub somebody's nose in something after it's over because of the fact that you know we want people to step down if there's a problem that's the right thing to do stepping down is the right thing to do when there's a problem and so 
let's respect that. And let's not become the old IFB, where, where it's just we just keep on going and just ignore problems and just keep going, pretend it's not happening, pretend it's not there. You know, so that's, that's a good comment. Everybody good? All right. Well, let, I mean, let's just let's just read a little bit of scripture and just I'll do a little bit of preaching. Just you know, we'll do something and then we will dismiss the service. And and I, you know, and like I said, I'm here. I'm available. Brother Edelman, he's off. He's off for the next few days from work, and he's available. I'm available, and uh, you know, we just want to help. So. Okay, let's turn our Bibles, let's read some scripture, let's turn over to Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter number 8, let's give you a little sermonette here, Romans chapter 8, the Bible reads in verse number 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now and not only they but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the spirit even we ourselves groan within ourselves waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body for we are saved by hope but hope that is seen is not hope for what a man seeth why doth he yet hope for but if we hope for that we see not then do we with patience wait for it likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. 
What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors, through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for this evening, Lord, and I pray that you'd speak to us from this passage tonight. Lord, we need to hear from you, from your word. And Lord, I pray that you would just open up this passage to us and encourage us, bless us. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. In Romans chapter 8 here, starting in verse 28, of course, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And obviously the reason that God has to tell us this is because a lot of times it doesn't feel that way or we might not realize that all things work together for good. That's why God has to put a chapter like this and put scripture like this to remind us that one day we're going to look back at the events of our life. We're going to look back at the history of a church. And even though a lot of things don't make sense at the time, we're going to look back and say, you know what? Jesus led me all the way. All things truly work together for good. You know, I think of bad things that have happened to me in my life and just things that I thought I was doomed or just horrible things, financial problems, health problems. But I can look back and literally virtually all of them, I can say, you know what? Now I see why that happened. That was preparing me for something that would happen later or, or that ended up actually turning out great. Boy, isn't it amazing how God worked that out all together. Now, let me say this though. Things don't work together for good for everybody. There are a lot of people who end their life in failure. They end their life in shipwreck. Bad things happen to them, and it's just a disaster. And there's no silver lining. There's nothing good about it. It's just bad on bad. So I'm not up here to tell you, hey, everybody gets a happy ending. Hey, everything turns out great for everybody. Hey, all things work together for good all the time for everybody. Really? Because look around the world, and you know what you're going to find? The dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. We could go to places today in Africa and Asia and even places within the United States where people are living a life that's like a living hell. Where things are horrible. Where people are, are struggling and suffering and there's no end. There's no hope. I'm not here to lie to you and tell you that all things work together for good, period. Because you know what? If you go out and you live a life of drunkenness, fornication, adultery, whatever, and you don't get that right and you don't repent of that, I'm not saying all things are going to work out for good if you quit the church. I'm not saying all things are going to work out for good if you, if you leave your spouse. I'm not saying all things are going to work out for good if you go out and live a life of sin and debauchery and ignore God's commandments, I'm not saying all things are going to work out for good even though you never read your Bible. I'm not saying all things are going to work out for good even though you don't pray, even though you don't worship the Lord. I'm here to tell you that all things work together for good to them that love God. Amen. To them that love God and to them that are the called according to his purpose. And if you know in your heart tonight that you love God, then I promise you all things will work together for good. For those that love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. But you know what? You have to love God and you have to do what's right. You have, because look, loving God and doing what's right are connected. The Bible says, if a man say, I love God and keep his eyes commandments, he's a liar. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So what I am saying though, is if you love God, all things work together for good. Even when things come at you that are a disaster. 
I mean, even when you get in that car crash, even when you get in that horrible injury, even when you get that sickness or illness, even when friends stab you in the back, if you love God, all things work together for good to those who love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. You know, most of the promises in the Bible are conditional. Most of the promises in the Bible, they have some sort of a attachment to them. Of if you do this, you'll receive this. You know, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Does that can, can anybody just say, well, the Bible says thou shalt be saved, so I'm saved. <laughs> no, because you have to do what? You got to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you got to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And if you do that, thou shalt be saved. Okay. And then there are lots of other places in the Bible that said, you know, for example, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So look, is that just saying everybody's going to feel peace? No. He's saying if you will go to God in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, if you cast all your care upon him, he careth for you. You can have the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, if you let your request be made known unto God. But if you ask not, you have not, yeah. right? So the point is, you have to do your end of the bargain here. You need to love God, and if you love God, then all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose now let's keep reading he says for whom he did foreknow he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren now we know that god foreknew who would be saved i mean god knows the end from the beginning god's already seen all of us in heaven he's already fellowshiped with all of us in heaven you know up in in revelation chapter 7 when that great multitude's in heaven and john is looking at that great multitude we were all there even though it hasn't even happened yet john saw us in that crowd in revelation 7 from god's perspective we were already in heaven it's over i mean look you can read about the end in revelation right so God knows the end from the beginning. I mean, God knows everything. So even before the world began, God foreknew who would get saved and who would not get saved. I mean, God knows everything. And so he knew that going in. Well, the Bible says that whom he did foreknow. And who did he foreknow? We're talking about the people that got saved. Okay, he foreknew that. He foreknew that I would get saved, that you would get saved. Whom he did foreknow, he also... Not only did he just foreknow them, but he predestinated them to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So he looked forward in the future and foreknew, but he has a destiny for us. He predestined us to certain things, and he predestined us to be sons of God, to be daughters of God. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So look, someday we are going to be conformed to the image of Jesus. Someday he will change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he's able even to subdue all things into himself. Look, it doesn't matter how bad things get in your life. It doesn't matter what the low point, you're going to heaven. Amen. Oh, my body hurts. You know, and you know, I have problems sometimes where my body doesn't cooperate and do what I want it to do. And in, in fact, I'm limping right now because this afternoon I was standing out in the cold for too long. And, you know, I'm from Arizona. I'm not used to the cold. And so I'm standing out in the cold in thin suit pants. And I'm standing out there. And all of a sudden, I started getting, like, just this Charlie horse in my quad right here. It is hurting. And it just kept hurting more, hurting more. It was, like, tightening up. And now I'm, like, limping because, ugh, ouch. I shouldn't have demonstrated that. But it hurts really bad. You know, our bodies have problems. 
You know, and I'm sure you got your physical ailments. I have a finger that slips out of joint all the time. You know, we all have our physical ailments, different problems, different issues. But you know what? Isn't it great that one day that's all going to be over? <coughs> you know what I mean? And, and the older you get, you just kind of rack up injuries. You know what I mean? Like when you're when you're young, everything works. But then you, you get this injury, you get that injury. And it's just like you just rack up injuries and just start you just stack them. And by the time you're 70, 80, you've just stacked up all these injuries. And it's just, you know, your body's getting worn out. It's just never going to be the same. That's why you got to get a new body, yeah. you know, when you get to heaven. So the, the, the point is, though, look, it's, it's not just like that with our bodies. It's just like that with our lives. You know, there are bad times, low points, physical problems, emotional problems, relationship problems, money problems. But you know what? We can say, okay, number one, all things work together for good to them that love God. So it's all going to work together. It's not even just that it's going to end up good. It's all going to work together for good. God's even going to use the bad things for good. I mean, think about it. Was it right for Joseph's brethren to throw him in a pit and sell him into slavery and lie about it? No. So you, you can't say, oh, well, it ended up good, so I guess what they did was actually good. You'd be like John Hagee where you say like, oh, well, the Jews killed Jesus. It's a good thing. That way he died for us. Good job, Jews. You did good because we needed the sacrifice to die. I mean, isn't that just stupid? Yeah. Yeah, amen. Look, yeah, yeah, it's great Jesus died for us. Hey, the Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It were better for that man if he'd never been born. Right. Yeah, hey, Judas Iscariot would have been better off never having even been born. Yeah. But did he fulfill scripture? Did he fulfill a role? Okay, did all things that w work together for good as a result of what Judas did? Hey, it didn't work together good for him because he ended up hanging himself and then falling down and all his bowels gushed out, the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 1. So that didn't work out good for him, but it worked out pretty good for me that Judas betrayed Jesus. It worked out pretty good for you that Judas betrayed Jesus, right? So the point is, look. All things work together for good to them that love God and even bad things, even, even rotten things, even sinful things can work together for good. It doesn't mean God ordained those things. It doesn't mean that it was God's will that those things necessarily happened. But God can take any situation and it can work together for good. And plus, we know that no matter what happens in our lives, what's the, we know the final chapter. No matter how rough the road is, we all make it to heaven because if we've believed in Jesus Christ, we're, we're done. We made it. We're saved. Amen. Saved. The D stands for done. <laughs> saved. Amen. It's done. You're there. We made it. It's not like Pilgrim's Progress. Like, oh, man, we got to keep trying to get there. Got to get to that celestial city. You know, we don't want to screw this up. Beat me up, Scotty. I'm done. I'm there. I'm going. But you know what? Along the way, all things can work together for good, too. And then we also know that we're predestined to be conformed to the image of It's our destiny. He knew us. He predestined us. We're going. And then it says, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who, what, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril, or sword, or, you know, a change in the pastor, or whatever. I mean, is that stuff going to separate us from the love of God? Look, if it doesn't separate us from the love of God, if we're still more than conquerors, if we're still on the winning side, if things, if, if we still, look, did we stop loving God? No. So therefore, all things are going to work together for good. For us, personally, no matter what. And you know what? Let's say the people around you, let's say they throw in the towel. Let's say they get discouraged. Let's say they end up quitting on God. You know what? You 
will continue and succeed if you love God. Amen. So even if people are falling out around you, that doesn't mean that it has to affect you. You know, I think back to my youth group going up, growing up, and, you know, I think about how many of those teenagers that I went to the same church with and heard all the same preaching with just made shipwreck of their lives and shipwreck of their faith and just went out and just lived a, a, a life that's the wrong kind of life. But you know what? Didn't affect me. Why? Because the promises of God are true no matter what the tribulation, no matter what the distress, no matter what the persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword. And what does tribulation mean? Tribulation just means trouble. You notice that the, the, the same consonants are there? Trouble, T-R-B-L, tribulation, T-R-B-L. Those words are connected. Okay. So any kind of troubles, any kind of trials, any kind of tribulation – Look, it doesn't separate us from the love of God. Is it like, oh, well, I know I predestined you to be conformed to the image of my son, but I'm gonna re let's reevaluate that. Let's rethink that. No, nothing changes it. Your home in heaven is secure. Your status as a child of God is secure. The love of God is sure. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And not only that, all things are going to work together for good to them that love God. Even if the guy next to you stops loving God, even if the guy next to you's love wax cold, hey, what about you? How are you doing? Because there's only one person that can destroy you, and that's you. There's only one person that can destroy me, and that's me. Other than that, I'm invincible. Why? Because if God be for us, who could be against us? If God's for us, who can be against I I am invincible yeah. right. unless I self-destruct. Yeah. Right. I can self-destruct <coughs> or I can conquer. No one, I mean, what, 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 what can outside forces do to me? They could beat me. They could incarcerate me. They could maim me. They could mutilate me and beat me and kill me. And what would be left would just be a beaten, maimed, mutilated, abused corpse. But you know what? They can never separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, my Lord. And, and I would be a conqueror no matter what. I, whom then shall I fear? The Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? If God be for us, who can be against us? Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Rather fear him which is able to, to destroy both soul and body in hell. You know, the Lord God is the one who we ought to fear and not fear man. And just realize, hey, if we love God, we keep his commandments, we're called according to his purpose, Hey, nothing can separate us. It's all going to work together for good. Amen? Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this passage, Lord. I pray that it would be a blessing. And Lord, I just pray that you would strengthen your people, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit as we go, Lord. Guide and direct over the next few days. Guide and direct this Sunday, Lord. Please, Lord, please intercede for us, Lord. We know not always how to pray how we ought. We know not how to pray as we ought, but we know that according to Romans 8, the Holy Spirit will make intercession for us. And so we pray that the Holy Spirit would take our prayers that we pray tonight and tomorrow and the next day. Lord, take our prayers and make intercession for us with, with, with utterances that, that, that we can't even utter, Lord, because we don't even know how to pray as we ought, Lord. And so please just take our prayers as we do our best to pray unto you and ask for wisdom and guidance and ask for your will to be done. Take our prayers and translate them to your perfect will, Lord, because we just want your will to be done as, as in it is in heaven. We want it to be done on earth as well, Lord. And we just pray that you would just bless Steadfast Baptist Church, bless the people, Lord, bless those who love you, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right, let's sing a song and be dismissed. So I'll ask the song leader to come and lead us in a closing song.